Hello everyone, Guy in the Shell here to talk about understanding binary. I felt like doing this very introductory episode because if we want to dive into rather low level topics, binary, as well as hexadecimal, that we'll talk about in the next episode, then those feel very handy. And since most people don't use this day to day, a refresher is a good idea. So let's dive in. We use binary because that's how the hardware powering our computers work. An electronic component can either be activated or not, that is to say whether it receives a current or not. On a magnetic hard drive, used to store data without active current, in each data cell, we store only one of two states. So you get binary, a world in which everything is in one of two states. Now we needed a representation to talk about those states. Since we have two, we needed two characters. So we chose zero and one. Conventionally, zero is the off state, the one where there is no current, and one is the on state. Each time we need to transfer or store information, we can use a bit, and its value is either zero or one. Now obviously, storing only two values is not very useful. That is why when we store information, we use several bits. With two bits, you can store the values 00, 01, 10, and 11. That is to say with two bits, you can represent four different states of values. You can do the same gymnastic with three bits and you'll get eight distinct states of values. Math allows you to generalize this. Knowing that a bit can have only two distinct values, if you take n bits, you can represent two to the power of n states of values. Now we have a mean to process or store more meaningful data. By the way, meaningful? Well, yes, yeah, so by stringing bits together, we can represent things that can take a lot of different states of values. For example, with 8 bits, we can represent 2 to the power of 8, that is to say 256 states of values. But what do those states mean? What does the binary string 01001101 mean? One way to assign meaning to those strings of zeros and ones would be to have some sort of dictionary that would map a binary string to a letter, for example. By the way, this is going too fast. First, we need to realize that a binary string has a meaning in math and represents a number. Spoiler alert, 01001101 is actually 77. Okay, but let's forget about binary for a little bit and let's review how we usually use numbers and how we count. Sometime in the past, we arbitrarily decided to use 10 characters to represent numbers. Those characters are the well-known 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. It's important to understand that it was arbitrary. If you remember, Romans used a completely different way to represent numbers. And one, by the way, that was not very practical for math. And yes, it's very possible that we use 10 characters to do math because we have 10 fingers, but still it's arbitrary. We could also have used five characters, which is what we could represent easily with one end, for example. Anyway, so to count, we use those characters one at a time. When we don't have any left, we introduce a second character in front and it starts at one. When we exhaust the characters on the right again, we just go to the next character on the left and start over. And when we have exhausted both characters for the left and right position, we again add one character to the start and over and over again. This allows us to represent any number we want in a systematic way. So this is very mechanical and logical, hopefully. This is because that's what we have learned and used since uh, we were little kids. But math, again, can explain this notation. We said that we use 10 characters in our mathematical notation. That is the decimal system. In math, 
you say that you represent the number in base 10. If we take a random number written 1, 3, 5, 8, we can interpret it with the base decoding formula. You take each character and you multiply it by the base elevated to the power of the position of the character. And then you sum everything you get. So let's do it. 8 is the first character at position 0. So we do 8 times 10, the base, to the power of 0. 10 to the power of 0 is 1, so it's 8 times 1, and it's 8. Next, we have 5 in position 1. That's 5 times 10 to the power of 1, so that's 50. Next is 3 in position 2, that's 3 to the times 10 to the power of 2, that's 300. And finally, we have 1 in position 3, that's 1 times 10 to the power of 3, that's 1000. And you sum it all, and you get 1358. Okay, so it's a bit stupid and obvious, because, well, yeah, we could read this number, right? It's base 10, we don't need to decode base 10, that's how, that's how we speak daily, and that's how we work with number daily. But when we return to binary, now we'll see that it all makes sense. So back to binary. Binary counting uses only two characters to represent numbers. Those are zeros and one. In math, we call that base two. The way we count with those numbers follow the same rule as the decimal representation. We first enumerate all our characters, zero and one. When we don't have any left, we add one new character on the left and continue. Of course, having only two characters, the representation soon grows rather long. Let's take the binary number written as 1011 and apply the base changing formula to it to see what it means in our standard decimal representation. First is 1 in position 0. That's 1 times 2 to the power of 0, so that's 1. Next is 1 in position 1. That's 1 times 2 to the power of 1, so that's 2. Next is 0 in position 2. That's 0 times 2 to the power of 2, gives 0. Next is 1 in position 3. That's 1 times 2 to the power of 3. That's 8. Therefore, when we sum everything, we get a number that is 11. 1011 in binary is 11 in decimal. Because all of this math is just arbitrary representation, we can also do addition of binary numbers, the same way we learned to do addition of decimal numbers. Let's add 1001 to 1101. We start by adding the first two digits. That's 1 and 1. In binary, that would be 1, 0, the sum of 1 and 1. So we write 0, and we carry the 1 over. Then we have 0 plus 0, and the 1 we carried over. So that's 1. Then we have 0 and 1. That's 1. And finally, we have 1 and 1. That's 1, 0. We put 0, carry the 1 over. It's on its own, so we drop it. That's the 1. So that's what it, what it gives, right? And if we apply our base changing formula to read those numbers in base 10, we would realize that we have done 9 plus 13 is equal to 22. And that's all there is to it. We use the binary notation to represent numbers, and we humans can do math with them. But our computers can too, because they use 0 and 1. So now that we have numbers, how do we represent text? Well, now this dictionary that I talked about comes into play, right? We need a dictionary that maps a number to a character. And the most common and very widely used one of those dictionary is the ASCII table. It's a completely arbitrary dictionary that tells you that uppercase letter A is 65. Uppercase letter B is 66. They follow each other. There is a logic. Lowercase letter A is 97. And lowercase letter B would be 98. We also see that the character one, not the number one, but the character one, is represented by a number also, and it's 49. So with that mapping table, we can now not only store and process numbers, but we can do the same with text. 
So that means that we can take a text, encode it into numbers, store it, because the computer can store those numbers, and then we can retrieve it and decode it and get back some text. To conclude, I'd like to show you briefly how you can play with those concepts we just learned today using the Python language. Python is meant to interact with humans. So by default, it uses the decimal system to represent numbers. If we feed it the number 10, it gives back this number as is. If we ask 9 plus 13, it will give us 22. And this is the right answer in base 10 only. Now, let's input a binary number. So, of course, if we input again some strings of 1 and zeros, Python thinks that it's a decimal number. So if you want to enter a binary number, we have to be explicit. And the way to be explicit with Python is to prefix the number by 0b. 0b101 will uh, tell Python that we want the binary number 101, and Python will tell us this is 5. So as a note, Python does not have a way to explicitly say that we are using decimal numbers. That's just the default. But we could find in other places that we can be very specific about base 10 by saying 0d. This won't work because Python doesn't understand it, but some other places we'll see in other videos will. So now we can put some numbers into Python and make it understand that we are talking binary, but it's answering in decimal. Now, if we want this decimal number representation to be binary, because we want to know what's the binary version of that, we can use the bin function. And the bin function, it takes a number into parameter and it will return its binary representation. As you can see with the quotes in the output, this function returns a string. And this is because Python will only give us numbers in decimal. So if we do want to see something in some other notation, well, Python will give us a string. So that's something a bit interesting to know. Now, there is another way to have Python interpret numbers and without even giving a prefix, and that's the int function. So the int function, it takes a string this time in parameter, and it will return a number. Now, again, because we are humans and Python is meant to interface with us, it will assume by default that we are talking decimal because again, this function takes a string that represents a number, but that is not prefixed. So Python has to choose a base to understand this string and it will choose base 10 because that's the most probable one because it's speaking to humans. So it's reading this 100 as 100, as a base 10, 100. Now we can say, wait, this string is actually a binary string. But to do that, we have to be explicit about the base. So we want this int function to read this string 100 in base 2. So we can give the base as the second parameter. And if we do that, Python will tell us, well, this is the number four that you have given me. And that's how you can use int to read a number. So that's it for numbers. Now we also talked about the ASCII table. So let's do that in Python. So Python provides two functions, one to go from a character to its ASCII number representation. And this function is ORD. So we can take ORD and we can take an ASCII character. And if we do that, we get its number representation in decimal again. If we were to give it something else than a character, it would fail. Okay, it's expecting a single character. Now the second function takes a number and gives us the ASCII character it represents. This function is chr. So chr, if we feed 65 that we got earlier, 
for the uppercase A, it's giving us uppercase A. What we can see, uh, interestingly, is that CHR will only start giving some real values after a little while. Those are actually just numbers it's returning. Uh, we, we'll get into that maybe later. So um, you, you have to go a bit further to start to see actual characters. And also, if we go above 126, so 126 is still a character, but 127 is not. That's actually the delete uh, uh, character. And then again, you have some, some things that are uh, not characters anymore. And this is because the ASCII table goes only up to 127 with a few special characters at the very start. That's why zero and one and a few others are, are a bit weird. So th this is this ASCII table is limited in range um, and it stops at 127, the original ASCII table. If you use CHR for some bigger number, you will find some characters from time to time. It's because CHR is not strictly ASCII, um, but we won't talk about that today. And we'll stop there. C O R D sorry is for character to integer representation in decimal. C H R is the reverse operation. Okay, so if we do ORD of C H R of ninety seven, we should get ninety seven, and that's it. If we do C H R of ORD of B, we should get B, and that's it. And that closes today's discussion about binary. We saw that binary is a notation that uses only 0 and 1 as characters. We saw that it can be used to represent numbers in base 2. We saw how to use binary numbers and even how to add them. We saw that the ASCII table gives us a convention mapping a number to a character. And we saw that we can use Python to play with binary numbers, decimal numbers, and the ASCII table. I hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next video to talk about hexadecimal this time. Bye-bye.